So whatever today we are going to cover is going to be related to procurement management or procurement planning. And we have said procurement is related to buying and purchases. Okay, so we are going to learn more in details how we are going to do that particular step, how to plan for it. So in procurement planning, it says for us, normally, normally there should be a contract. Okay, normally there should be a contract. Okay. Procurement, procurement can be seen as a contract between the supplier and the contractor. The supplier will bring will bring for the contractor the materials in the site. Is it clear? Once again, between the supplier and the contractor, we will have a contract between them. And the supplier will bring the materials for the site. Are we fine? Okay. And there will be another contract between the contractor and the owner. Okay, in which the contractor needs to finish or complete the project. To give it to the owner. Okay. Are we okay here? When we talk about construction contract, there are a lot of contracts inside one project. Are we fine? Now, when it comes to procurement management, there are certain things that we need to do before saying that we have completed the procurement. Now the first thing, the first thing, we have something called statement of work. Now let's say let's say that I want I, I want to uh, complete a certain task and I want to bring people to do it for me. What is it? What's the first thing that I need to tell them? Let's say I'm an owner and I want a contractor to do my house. Do I need to give him certain information or it's not required? He can just start directly. He can bring a plan from his own. He can start doing whatever he wants, whenever he wants. Or there are certain things that I need to tell him. Once again, if you bring any person to do any work for you, do we need to inform him what to be done and when to be done? Or it's not required. Okay. You should tell him. So when I say when I say statement of work, if you divide the, what what you call the terms inside uh, this particular uh, terminology, phrase statement of work, we are trying to inform him what work exactly he is going to do for us. Okay, so it's like a letter of description in which we are describing whatever is required to be done. Are we clear when we say statement of work? Now, statement of work normally, statement of work will have different things to be done. Okay, I will include different things. Do we need to include the purpose? Do I need to tell him that I want you to come here to build to build my house, for example. Do I need to tell him the purpose of the project? The description, when I give him the description, do I need to tell him that this is going to be a construction of a building or I don't need to inform him? So I should tell him what purpose, what is the purpose of the project or what is, what is the thing that he needs to deal with? Okay, I, know I cannot bring a person from somewhere without telling him that I need you to do this work for me. Okay, so that's the purpose. After the purpose, we have scope of work. Now, is there, is there any is there any difference between purpose and scope? Is there any difference between purpose and scope? A lot of a lot of students normally are confusing between these two. Is there any difference between purpose? like goal and scope of work? Uh, for purpose, doctor, will be the reason why you are building this uh, house. The scope is the task you have, you have, you have want to do in this to complete this project. 
any other person you can open your mic if you want to answer as well okay so what's the difference between purpose and scope of work okay Can you give me an example? Most of you are trying to define for me what's school. I don't want the definition. Okay. Now, why why do we have why do we have what you call? Let, let's say we are talking about the construction of a house. We have a subcontractor, we have a contractor. Okay. We have a subcontractor and we have a contractor. Now, the whole purpose of all the people inside that particular project is to complete the project. So, the purpose is to build, for example, a villa. Okay. The purpose is common for all of them that we are coming here to complete the construction of this particular villa. Are we clear about the purpose? Okay, so the purpose is going to be something which is common. Okay, for those who are working under the same umbrella of the project. Now, are they going to have the same work? Or everyone is assigned his own separate work? Is it the same work? Or everyone is having his own work? So the subcontractor, he will have his own work. The subcontractor, he is going to have his own work. The contractor, he is going to have his own work. Otherwise, if they are doing the same, I don't need to have two. I'll have only either the contractor or the subcontractor. Is it clear? So when I when I talk about the school here, I'm referring to the individual tasks that has been given to this particular person. OK, so when I talk to purpose, purpose is general for all the people, or all the parties inside the project. Scoop is going to be referring to the work that needs to be done from your side only, not from the others who are still there in the project. Are we clear? Another example. I have given you, I have given you an assignment. I said for you, there is an assignment, okay, in which that you are required to go and do for me risk management for a certain project. Okay. And you were a group of, let's say, a group of four people, or four students, okay, group of four students. Now, your whole purpose, the purpose of the group, the purpose of the four students is to finish this particular assignment. You have a common purpose. Now, when we talk about the scope, you have divided that the, the first student is going to do a risk identification. Second one is to do an analysis. The third one is going to do the responding. The last one is to do a risk register. Now, when I say what is the scope of each and every one, then the scope is going to be something different. Is it clear? Are we fine? Okay. Now, when we talk about what what is the meaning of deliverables? Okay. What's the meaning of deliverables? Any person? Deliverables? And this is normally more into the supplier. Okay. Deliverables, but can be for the contractor as well. Now, when we when we work, for example, in a construction of a villa, and I'm talking to the contractor, do I need to give him certain 
time that he needs to finish certain tasks or it's not required that keep it open for him. Would you keep it open or would you keep like deadlines for certain tasks to be finished so you can control? You can track whether you are OK, whether they are late or not. There will be there will be some kind of deadlines, right? For each and everything, there will be some kind of deadline. Otherwise, if I didn't put some deadlines for me, I cannot I cannot know whether I'm late or I'm faster than the base. Are we OK? So when we talk about deliverables, we talk about certain items being finished. Okay. When we talk about suppliers, I'll tell him 20% of the items is to be delivered today. 20% of the items is to be delivered or the second 20% is to be delivered next week. And it goes on. You have a certain deadline. Let's say today he's supposed to be giving me 20% and he didn't give it to me. So when I when I refer to deliverables, deliverables are the things that needs to be finished or accomplished within a duration of time. Why we are doing so? So we can track whether we are fast, whether we are slow, and we'll know what to do later. So we are not going to have delays in this particular project. Are we clear? Is it clear? Okay. So once again, deliverables are referring to what what things to be delivered. Delivered can be task, can be an item. And when these are going to be delivered for me. So there should be a limitation in terms of time. 20% of the villa is to be finished in the first month. The other 20% is to finish within the other three months. And it goes on. Okay, these are the deliverables. Do I need to tell him? Do I need to tell the contractor or the supplier the deliverables? Or shall I keep it open for him? Do we need to inform him? Or shall we keep it open and it's up to him? Once again, we said we need to tell him so we can track the progress. Whether he is working, whether he is not working. If he is not working, then everything is going to be showing that we are going to have a delay. OK. Now, would you have when you when you go and have your plans, for example, I got from the architect. I went for the architect or the consultant, and he gave me he gave me his uh, his drawing. Okay, he just gave me the drawings. Now, will you go only for one person? Will you go for one contractor, or will you go for many contractors? Will you only search for one person to do for you the work, or you will try to see other person? When you have something to when you have something you want to get the supply, okay, we want to supply some materials to our site. We'll go only for one suppliers or we'll go for many suppliers. We'll go for many suppliers, of course, because we want to get the best. Okay, we'll go for many suppliers because we want to get the best op the best option. Now, do I need to tell him in what basis I'm going to choose which supplier? Do I need to inform them in what basis? Do they have a right to know how would I choose the supplier? Do I need to announce or do I need to say that I'm going to choose, for example, the lowest supplier? Or I'm going to choose the supplier who will give me exactly the same materials that I'm asking. Okay. So for those who have said no, why? Why no? Now, if you, if you are not telling them, if you are not telling them exactly what you are concentrating at, 
nobody will concentrate on whatever you want. If I'm not saying for them, I'm going to choose based on the lower price, then nobody will try to reduce his price. If I'm not telling them that I'm going to choose the supplier who is going to supply me the same exact material, then the other sub the suppliers will not bring for me the exact same materials from the same companies that they have asked. So is it, is it important to show that or to say the acceptance criteria? Okay, do I need to emphasize what is required exactly? Am I looking for the price or am I looking for the quality or am I looking for the definite thing that I'm asking for? Okay, now if you don't show them, if you don't show them, you will see that less number of people will only give you whatever you are looking for. Okay. So it's really important to show the acceptance criteria. Now, nobody or less number of options you will be having if you don't if you don't have a clear cut methodology on what you are going to have as an acceptance criteria. I'll give you an example. Let's say let's say now uh, Sultan Qaboos University. Now, most of you know Sultan Qaboos University. Now Sultan Qaboos University has said, I have uh, a scholarship. We are having a free scholarship for a master's degree. Okay which will be given to the students of the college or university. One is for civil, one is for architecture. Now, is it important for you to know in what basis they are going to choose? Or it's not important? Do I need to know in what basis they are going to look? Are they looking for the grade? Are they looking for the best portfolio? Are they looking for extra work? what they are looking exactly for. OK, so now it's really important. It's really important for me to put the acceptance criteria. So I'll have only those people who are interested and who are uh, fitting this particular criteria. They can go, they can go and work with me. I don't want all the people in, in the in the southern to try to apply for me. OK, are we clear why acceptance criteria is important? It will help you getting whatever you want. It will. Uh, what you call it will reduce the intensity on you. You will not have a lot of people applying for things that you, you don't require. That's why even in, when even when you see the jobs, like whenever a company is offering a job, always you will you will see that they are mentioning number of experience. They are mentioning that you should be working on this and you should be working with this software and you should be working in that. Now that's that's their acceptance criteria. If you don't fit, then there is no point of you applying. Is it clear? OK. Now, payment schedule. Do I need to inform him how I'm going to pay? Whether I'm going to pay the full amount or whether I'm going to pay in installments? Is it important to tell him? OK. So once again, this is payment schedule. Okay. So now, what is statement of work? Statement of work is a document in which we are showing certain things. We are showing the purpose of the work. We are trying to show, show the scope of work for each and every individual. We are showing the deliverables in terms of time. We are telling the suppliers or contractors the acceptance criteria in which they can apply. And then we are going to give them a highlight on how the payment is going to be. Now, after these are covered, will the person, will the contractor or the supplier, okay, 
will the contractor or supplier okay will the contractor and supplier will he have a clear picture about your project So by giving him the state statement of work and showing for him everything here, then he will be able to decide whether to go for your project or not to go for project for your project. Okay. So it's really important to have this statement of work, whether you are talking about a construction project, whether you are talking about any other type of project, it's important to have a document describing all of these things. Are we clear? Now we are going to have something called delivery systems. Oh, okay. Now we have different delivery systems. Um, and delivery systems is a methodology of you having your, your project from the beginning till the end. The methodology that you are having from the beginning to the end. Now let, let's say let's say that I want to construct my villa. I want to start building my builder. What, what's the first step that I need to do? I'm a person who has now 50,000 reals with me. I didn't do anything before, 50,000 with me, and then I want to construct a builder. Okay, I have finished the visibility studies and everything. What is the first thing that you need to do? To whom you will talk first? Once again, I have the money, required money. I went or I need to go to whom to start the first step of constructing my villa. Do I need to go to the contractor? Can I go to the contractor without the drawing? Is it possible to go to the contractor without drawing? Okay, first, first, we don't call it the contractor here. Okay? We don't call it the architect in here. Okay? We call it the consultant. Okay, we'll go for the consultant. Okay, we'll go for the consultant. Okay, we'll go to the consultant. The consultant is of a civil engineer and a, an architect. Now, in Omani regulation or Omani laws, we call them architect and engineer. We don't call it a civil engineer, we call it the engineer. Okay, so architect and the engineer or the civil engineer. Now what's what's their what's their what's their function? What they do for me? Why do I need to go to the consultant? What he will do for me? Okay. So he will do for me, he will do for me the plans or drawings, right? He will start doing for me the drawings, right? Now after after you get after you finish the drawings, you have the drawings with you. What's the next step? After I have received all the drawings, what's the next step? You have all your drawings, okay? Drawings including the plan, the structural drawings as well. When I say drawings, they are including both architectural, structural, everything. When I say drawings, once again, it includes approval. You cannot get the drawings, the final drawings, without be, them being approved. Okay, so as Said said. We are going to go to the contractor. Now, will you go for one contractor or will you go for many contractors? Will you give your drawings to only one contractor or you will give your drawings to many contractors? When I take the drawings from the consultant and they were approved, 
I'll go for the contractors. Now, will I go and give it only to one person or will I give it to more than one person to get the best offer? If you are planning to go and purchase a phone, will you only go for one shop or you will try many shops to get the best offer? So of course, if I'm searching, okay, if I'm searching, if I'm searching for a best offer, okay, if I'm searching for a best offer, then of course it's better to go for more than one. If you are in hurry, if you are in hurry and you need to finish it off, then you can go for one only. Okay, for example, if I'm urgent, I don't have time, I'll go to a shop for example, which is guaranteed that they will be having the phone. Like for example, I'll go to extra. Okay. But the price of extra is going to be high. But due to the fact that I don't have time, I went for a place where they have the phone for a higher price. Now, if I am looking for the best offer, then I'll be looking for different shops. And of course, there will be a shop which is lesser than extra. Are we clear? So the regular the, the regular method of construction, the regular method of construction, we need to go and do the drawings. After the drawings, we go and take it to different contractors. And then among these contractors, they will give me the offer. Whatever I receive from them, I'm going to check which offer is going to be the best for me. And normally for regular small projects, we are looking always for the lowest price. The best offer refer to the lowest price when we talk about individual projects. OK. The lowest price, right? Now, after having the lowest price, the next step, the contractor will start building your house or your villa. Right? Are we clear? Oh, now this is what you can see. OK, this is what you can see. Now you can see. The owner. OK, the owner went to the architect. And the design team, whatever we call it, the man as a consultant. So the owner went at the first place, the owner went to the cons consultant. And this is whatever we call it as design. Okay, so the first step is called design. Okay, so the owner or the client, we said they are what you call interrelated terminologies. If you remember, we said they are going to go for the architect or the consultant. They are going to design our drawings for us. After we are having the drawings, the next step that I'm going to give it to the different contractors. Can you see that I'm giving it to the different contractors? Now, after giving it to the to the different contractors, you will see that only one will be chosen. Now, on what basis the one will be chosen based on here written as competition or whatever we refer as. Best offer or whatever we call it technically as bidding. You know what's the meaning of bidding? Anybody knows what's the meaning of bidding? OK. Something like an auction, OK. OK, so bidding is wherever you have different people giving their own offers and then you are going to cho choose from the offers. Okay. Bidding is wherever you are having different people offering you something and then among these offers you are going to choose one. That's whatever we call it bidding. Mr. Mithil, Munaqasa, Yani? Munaqasa is more into tender. Now, um, it's a little bit a bigger terminology, but once again, some part of some part of the bidding. Yani bidding is part of the tender. Okay. Bidding is part of tender. Have you seen that the what you call the number 
mean Amantel and Orilu, they were having that uh, what you call numbers auction or numbers bidding. Have you seen? Where they are offering the numbers, the, what you call the gold, the diamond numbers, those who are having four. I mean, you have heard, right? On what basis? Yes, yes. Okay. Now, on what basis the person will win getting that particular, getting that particular uh, number? On what basis? On what basis the person will be getting the higher price or let's say the best offer? Okay. The higher price or the best offer? Do you agree? Okay. So the same thing goes for construction. You are, the, you are doing some kind of bidding where you are giving your drawings for the different contractors. And you are receiving now from them their offers. Okay, you are receiving from them your offers. Now, would you look for the lowest price or would you look for the highest price? In terms of construction. Would you look for the highest price or the lowest price? We are going to search for the lower price, right? We are going to show, we are going to search for the lower price to construct our building. Okay. So the whole step, the whole step of doing the, what you call approaching the contractors, getting their offer and choosing the best offer is whatever we call it as bidding. Are we clear? Is it clear what's the meaning of bidding? Once again, bidding is whenever we are having a group of people trying to give offers and then I'm going to choose the best offer. That's bidding. Another name is auction. OK, now after after you have finished the bidding and you have chosen the best offer, the next step is what exactly? The next step that this contractor is going to start working. He's going to start searching for a subcontractor and then he will work. So once again, the first thing we went for the consultant to do our drawings. After finding the drawings or after having the drawings, what has happened? We went giving it to the different contractors. These contractors are giving me the offers. From them, I'm going to choose the best offer. OK, so after choosing the best offer, the contractor can choose his subcontractor and then start working. Is it clear? Are we clear? OK, now you can see that there are three major steps. We we have design. We have design. Where the drawings ha have been made. We have bid wherever bidding is there and we have build which is after the bidding. So we call this method. We call it as design bid build method or we call it as traditional. OK, so both terminologies are fine. We call it as a traditional method. You have seen in a lot of your if you if you went through the the previous exams, you will see a lot of uh, what you call. It. Um, they are asking you to find out the delivery methods, which delivery method, which procurement route. These are referring to the methods in which you are illustrating the methodology. So one of the methodologies which are adopted is whatever we call a design bid bill or the traditional method. Are we clear? Are we fine? So once again, we call it design bid bill or we call it as traditional. OK. Now, do you think this will fit huge projects? 
or regular project? Do you think this method is fitting huge projects or regular projects? It's a regular, it's a regular one. That's why we call it as a tradition. Okay, that's why we call it as tradition. Now, in this scenario, who is acting as your project manager? Who will be looking after your project? The project is to be done by the contractor. Who will check what the contractor is doing? You will see that the owner, your parent, your father, used to go to the site to keep checking what the contractor is doing. Right? The person who is having that particular project, you will see each and every three days, he is going to go and check oh, what is happening here, what you have done, why the crack is here. So who is the one trying to check the progress of work of the contractor? Is going to be the owner. Now the owner can be the project manager for a typical project or he can be a project manager for a complicated project. If you are, if you are the project manager now, would you fit for a regular project or would you fit for a complicated project? Okay, for a typical, typical or whatever we call it as a regular project, right? I can only, I can manage small projects there are things which can be managed, but if the thing is very complicated, very new, I cannot fit as a as a project manager because I don't know how to evaluate this. Are we clear? Okay, so now what we have learned, what we have learned, the method is having three steps: is having design, bid build. Can I do the bid? without having the drawings? Can I do the bidding without having the drawings with me? No. Can we do the designing? Can, can we do the building? Can they? Can he start construction without having the drawings? No. So this process is whatever we call it sequential. This is a step-by-step -step method. You cannot go and do bidding unless you have finished designing. You cannot do building unless you have finished bidding. Is it clear? It's a sequenced method. It's a sequential method where it's a step by step method. You cannot jump the other step. Are we clear? Okay, so this is the first thing that we have learned about this method. The second thing that we have learned about this method that in this method, we are going to get the best offer. Do you agree with me? Do you agree that in this method that we are going to get the best offer? Why we are going to get the best offer? Because there is a bidding. Do you agree? So if you understood this chart, if you understood the chart, you can analyze this method. Okay. So once again, you don't need to mem memorize. You need to analyze the chart in front of you, and then you can say, what are the things available in this particular method? What are the strength points? What are the weaknesses and everything? Okay. Now, who is acting as a project manager in this method? So since it's typical, since it's typical, the project manager will be the owner. Okay, since it's typical, the project manager is going to be the owner. Okay. This is what we have learned. Now, can you tell me how many contracts will be there inside? How many agreements will, will be inside this particular shape? Do I need to have an agreement between the owner and the contractor? Is there any can you can you see can you see the arrows? Do we have an arrow between the owner and the consultant? 
Do we have an arrow between them? Between the owner and then the consultant. Do, is there any arrow between them? Okay. When I say when when I see when I see that there is an arrow, when I see that there is an arrow, it means that there is a contract between them. Now, do I need to have a contract between me and the consultant? There should be some kind of agreement between us, or it's not important. There should be some kind of agreement, otherwise he will not get his money, I'll not get my drawings. Okay. Now, is there is there any contract? There should be. The, will there be any contract between the owner and the contractor? Is there any arrows between the owner and the contractor? Once again, there is an arrow between the owner and the contractor. It means that there is a contract. Once again, there is agreement between the owner and the contractor. Agree? Okay. Now, do we have an arrow between the contractor and the subcontractor? Do we have an arrow between the contractor and the subcontractor? So once again, there is an agreement. There is an agreement between the contractor and the subcontractor. Now, do we have any arrow between the consultant and the contractor? Do we have any agreement between the consultant and the contractor? Is there any arrow between them? Do they need to know each other? It's not required that they need to know each other, right? There is no contract between them. Now, when I say contract between them, it means that there is a person who will pay. There is a person who will receive. The owner is the person who will pay for the design team. The owner is the person who will pay for the contractor. The contractor is the person who will pay for the subcontractor. Are we clear? Okay. Now, we learned a lot of things, a lot of advantages, like we are going to have the best offer that we said uh, this is typical, since it's traditional or typical, this is an advantage, okay? Now, what, what, what are the problems with this method? Okay, what are the problems with this method? We have learned certain advantages, okay? Now, what are the disadvantages here? And once again, I just illustrated it by arrows. Now, if there is, if there is a problem in drawing, will the owner know? If there is a, a, a problem in the drawing, will the owner be able to know? Is he experienced to know the technical error? No, he will not know. He is not technical. The regular owner, he is not technical to comment on the drawing. Okay. Now, he will take the drawing from the architect and he will give it to the contractor. Now, if the contractor said, that there is an issue with the with the drawing. What will happen? If the contractor, after revising the drawings, he said for you that there is an issue actually with this drawing. What will happen? Who will who will be back to the con? Who will be back to the architect or the design team? Will the contractor talk to the design team or will the owner go and talk to the consultant or the design team? Who will approach the design team? The owner. Why the owner? Who is the person? who will go to the design team. Okay. Now, if you see. Okay. Now, once again. Okay. So there was a mistake. The contractor has told me that there is an issue. Now, do, 
or does the contractor have any power over the consultant? Can he order the consultant to change anything? Is there any contract between the contractor and then the consultant? So on what basis you will talk to me as a contractor? If I'm a consultant and you are a contractor, on what basis you are going to talk to me? I don't have any agreement with you. His part is wrong. You need to give it to the owner. The owner will go and talk to me. I have a contract with the owner. The owner only, the only person to talk to me. Okay. Once again, once again, the owner is going to be the only person approaching the design team because the contractor can ask as well for any any changes without the owner knowing. Okay, so once again, since there is no contract between the design team or the consultant and the contractor, the contractor cannot approach the consultant. Are we clear? Now, in this particular mess, in this particular mess, if there is a mistake, who is the one losing time? Who is the person losing time? If there is any, who is losing time? The contractor is not losing anything. The project didn't start actually. It's not my mistake as a contractor that there is a problem in the drone. The person who is going to lose time is going to be the owner, of course. Okay. So one of the issues of this method, one of the issues of this method, that the drawings are not verified because there is no relationship between the person who is designing and the person who is constructing. So there are chances of having mistakes. Is it clear? Are we fine? Okay. The other thing. Now, when I said for you, there was a best offer. Let, let's say, let's say, for example, uh, three contractors have approached me with the offers. One of them is 50,000. Okay, so the first one offered me 50,000. The second one offered 55. And the third one offered 60,000. So 50, 55, 60,000. I'll be choosing which one? Once again, 50, 55. 60,000, three different contractors. I'll be choosing the one which is better for me. That is the 50,000. Once again, I am the owner. I am the owner. For me, the owner, I want to pay less price, of course. Okay, so there is 50, there is 55, and there is 60. So for me, I'm going to choose the 50,000. Okay, so the the amount that I'm going to sign in the agreement or the contract is going to be 50,000. The amount that I'm going to sign in the contract is going to be 50,000. Now, if anything has happened within, within the project, that for example, the materials prices are going up, who will be responsible? If anything has happened in the project, that the prices, for example, of the materials are going up. Okay, who will take the responsibility at that time? Is it you, the contractor, or is it the owner? Okay, I'll, I'll give I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Okay, I'll give you an example. Today I went, today I went to the, what do you call it? I went to the mobile shop. Okay, 
today I went to the mobile shop and I wanted to purchase a new iPhone 12. He said for me that um, I had the last piece, but I sold it. I don't have none. The price of the phone is 500 reals. Okay. So I went to purchase iPhone 12. He told me that this iPhone 12 is not available right now. The price of the iPhone 12 is 500 reals. Okay. I told him, can I pay for it? You just give me a bill. I'll pay the 500 reals. Whenever it's available, I'll take it from you. Are we okay till now? Okay, so I have signed an agreement. We had a bill between us. There is an agreement that I'm going to give him 500 reals for the iPhone 12. Are we okay? There is a bill, there is agreement, there is a contract. There is some kind of agreement between both of you. Okay. Now he called me. He called me after one week saying that the iPhone 12 is now available. But the iPhone 12 price is 520 reals. Oh, let's say 520 reals. Yes. How much will you pay? Will you pay 520 or you will pay 500 only? You will pay based on whatever you signed or you will pay based on whatever has changed. Already, by the way, already you have the bill with you. Already you have the bill that you have paid 500 for the iPhone 12. What I signed. Who will who will take that difference 20 reals? Who will be responsible about it? The 20 reals will be taken by whom? By me, the owner, or by the other person who is this contractor or the seller? The other person. So if I say for you, okay, if I say for you that I have signed an agreement for 50,000, I'm going to pay only 50,000. Whatever happens in the materials, whether the prices are going up or down, it's not my relationship. It's not my relation. I, are we okay? Whatever happens after the agreement, it's going to go to the contractor side. He is the responsible person. I have agreement that within 50,000 of my area, I need to give you 50,000 of my area. You need to build for me my villa. I'll not give you a single extra real or extra real. Are we clear? Okay. So this is something good for the owner or is it bad for the owner? Is it something good for the owner or is it something bad for the owner? To know the price from the beginning. To know that the price is fixed from the beginning. Is it good for the owner or is it bad? Something which is good. It's good if, if you know the price from the beginning, right? It's good. Okay, so the risk. The risk now in this method is with whom? Who is having the risk now? Is it the owner or is it the contractor? So the risk, the risk is going to go to the contractor side. Is it clear now? Is it clear? Okay. 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 So once again, by only checking this particular, uh, what you call uh, sketch, you will understand if you try to analyze it. 
yeah, it's going to be a lump sum. Whatever is going to be used is going to be a lump sum method, but we'll come to the payment methods later. Okay, so once again, the advantage here, the risk is going to go to the contractor. Now, what about what about the drawings? The drawings are going to have, I mean, the drawings, the risk of the drawing will be with whom? The drawings are the responsibility of the owner or the contractor. If there is a mistake in the drawing, is it a problem of the owner or the contractor? Okay. So once again, all the risks in this method, all the risks in this method will go to the contractor except the drawings. Because the drawing as a contractor, I didn't do it. You built it for me. So I'm not responsible about it. Are we clear? All the risks involved in this method are going to go to the contractor. Are going to go to the contractor. Except all the drawings risks. Is it clear? Are we clear? Oh. Now the next method, the next method is whatever we call it, is whatever we call it as construction management at risk. I don't know whether you can see or not. I don't think you can see. Okay, we have construction management at risk. Now, how many parties are there? How many parties are there? We have the owner here. Yeah. We have the owner here. We have a consultant. We have a construction manager. So once again, see the difference between the first method and second method. In second method, we're having the owner, the consultant, the construction manager, and then we have the contractor. Okay, once again, owner, consultant, construction manager, and then we have the contractor. Okay, now who has been increased from the first method to the second method? Which party was not in the first method, but it was included in the second method? It is a construction manager, right? It's a construction manager. OK, it's a construction manager. This method is called design bid build. The first one is design bid build or traditional. This method is called construction management at risk. OK, we call it as construction management at risk. So owner, consultant, construction manager, and then contractor. Okay. Now, would you bring a construction manager or construction manager is the same as a project manager? Project manager is the person who will who will manage the whole project from the beginning till the end, including initiation, planning, exclusion, controlling, and then com finishing. Construction manager is a manager who will be only responsible about the exclusion or the construction part. Are we clear? Once again, project manager is a person who is going to be managing the whole project from the beginning till the end, initiation, planning, execution, controlling, and then closing. Construction manager, he is only responsible about the construction part or whatever we call execution. Is it clear? Are we clear? OK, so once again, we have a construction manager and the above above the construction manager, we have a project. Manager. OK, we have a construction manager and the person who will come above the construction manager is going to be the project manager. Construction manager, once again, he's going to be the manager of a certain part only, which is exclusion or construction. That's why we call it as a construction manager. We don't call it as a project manager. He is not managing the other processes like the initiation and planning. Okay. 
Are we okay? Okay. Now, can can we refer to the arrows? Can we refer to the arrows so they will tell us between whom and whom we are going to have the the agreement? Now, do we have an agreement between the consultant and the owner? Do we have an arrow between them? Is there any agreement between the owner and consultant? Okay, so once again, there is there is an agreement between the owner and consultant. Consultant would do what? Consultant would will do what to exactly? The consultant will do what? The drawings. Okay. So after taking the drawings, now instead of giving it to the contractor, I'll be giving it to the construction manager. Okay. Now the main difference between the first one and the second one is after taking the drawings, I'll not give it to the I'll not give it to the contractor directly. I'll give it to the construction manager. Now, construction manager is going to be dealing with the contractors. Okay, so once again, there is there is a contract between the owner and consultant. There is an agreement between the owner and the construction manager, and there is an agreement between the construction manager and the contractor. Now, now if you think about this particular method, do you think that this is for small projects? Do you think that this method is for small projects? If it's a if it's a small project, then having a contractor is going to be sufficient. If we are talking about a small project or a typical project, having the contractor is sufficient. But if you have a huge project where there are more than one contractor, then you have you need to have a construction manager. Once again, if there is a typical project, one project, then one contractor is going to be sufficient. If you are having many contractors, then there should be one above the contractors, whatever we call it, as a construction manager. Like, for example, now when we talk about the project of a villa, do you think the contractor is sufficient? If we are talking about a villa, one contractor is sufficient? Okay. So in that scenario, I don't need to bring a construction manager because I was being there as a project manager. Are we clear? Now, if we go to the example of Amman Airport or Muscat Airport, Muscat International Airport, the new airport, do you think that one contractor is sufficient? They are having more than one contractor. Now, if you are talking about that particular project scale, then it's not sufficient to have one contractor. It means that I'm going to have a construction manager. Okay? It means that I'm going to have a construction manager above these contractors. I'm going to have one person who's called as a construction manager. Are we clear? Are we clear? Now, this method, whatever we have said right now, this method will fit complicated projects or will fit regular projects. Construction management at risk, will it fit complicated projects or will it fit regular projects? Huge projects or regular projects? So once again, it fits this method, fits complicated and huge method, a uh, huge construction, complicated, and huge. Are we clear? Are we fine? Okay, what, what's the name of the method? The name of the method is called construction management at risk. It says construction management at risk. So if I ask you now in this method, the risk is with whom? The risk is with whom now? Previously, it was with the contractor. Now, who is instead of the contractor being there at the top with the owner? It's a construction manager. So from the name, 
from the name, I should know, from the name, I should know that the rest now is with the construction manager. Okay. Accept once again, accept once again for the drawings. Now the drawing risks will be with whom? Who has done the drawings? Is it the construction manager? Who has done the drawings? See, if I have, if I was the one doing the drawings, then I'll be responsible about it. Now, as a construction manager, did I do this particular drawing? Or you have given it to me ready? I had received this from you only, so I'm not responsible about it. If there is any mistake in terms of drawing, then the responsibility will go to the owner and the consultant. Are we clear? So in this method now, in this method, if there is a mistake in the drawing, if the construction manager told you that there is a mistake in the drawing, what will happen? You will see that the construction manager will give the drawings back with the comments. He will give it back to the owner. The owner is going to give it to the consultant. The consultant is going to modify. He will send it once again to the owner. The owner will send it once again to the construction manager. Are we clear? Any changes, any changes or any mistakes in the drawings is taking a lot of time to be corrected. Are we, are we clear? So this is construction management at risk. The other method, the, the other method that we are having is whatever we call it as design build. So we have now design bit build or traditional. We have construction management at risk. And then this is the third one. Now for the third one, we call it as design build method. Okay, design build method. Now you can see here the owner has an agreement with design build entity. There is one company, there is one company who is doing the design or and build, or there are, there are two companies who have a joint venture. Okay, what is the meaning of joint venture? Joint venture means two companies have entered to a project as one. They are separate companies, but they have entered only for this particular project as one as one company we call it as a joint venture okay so either we have a company who is doing in the build i mean they are doing the designing they are constructing as well or we have two companies joined together doing the two parts for this project okay so if you see here if you see here once again the owner the owner went to a company who will do both designing they will do the drawings for you, and then they are going to do the construction as well. Now, if if there is, is there any chance of having issues here? If the owner, if the if the consultant is sitting in the same place with the with the person who is going to build or the contractor, do you think that there will be more more chances of having mistakes or less? In the previous methods, in the first method, you will see that the consultant is separate, the contractor is separate. So there is no way for them to sit with each other from the beginning to clarify things. Same with the construction management at risk. The consultant is separate, and the person who is doing the construction is separate. The designing part is separate. The construction is separate. Now, when it comes here, both of them are actually sitting in the same company, they are sitting in the same office. So the chances of having the chances of having any mistake is going to be lesser. Do you think that this method is going to be faster than the other methods?
in this method, in the first one, can I start construction in this method? Can I start construction before finishing the drawing? In the first method, which is traditional, can I start construction without finishing the drawing? In the first method, can I start construction without doing the drawing? No. Second method, can can the construction manager start his work without having the drawings? No. Okay. Going for the third method. If my design team, if my design team who is in the same company, if my design team who is in the same company has finished 50% of their design, can I start working that 50% until they finish the full design? Can I start constructing? Once again, now it's one company who is doing the design and the construction. They have finished 50% of their drawings. Okay, they have finished 50% of the drawing. Now, instead of waiting for them to finish the 100%, can I start working directly? Because I have the drawings with me, they are ready. Is it clear? So once again, this method, this method fits big project as well. It is the fastest method, okay? It is the fastest method because we don't need to wait for the drawings to finish completely. We can start like, for example, have, have, have you heard about the Oman Rail? That there are different zones, zone number one, zone number two, Oman Rail, the, rail, the railway. Okay, that there are different zones, zone one, zone one, zone number two, zone number three, and four. Okay, different zones are there. Now, for me, I don't need to go if they are the same company who was building and uh, designing. I don't need to go and wait for who, the whole zones to be designed. If they have finished zone number one, then directly I can start working on zone number one. In the same time, whenever I'm starting to construct zone number one, they are starting to design zone number two. So I'm saving a lot of time. Are we clear? Okay. Now this method fits. Will you will you use this method for small projects or huge projects? Do you think this method is cheap or expensive? Is this method expensive or cheap? If it's expensive, you will use it for small projects or huge projects. If it's expensive, you will use it for small projects or huge projects. Okay, so normally this is used for projects where there are a lot of changes. Okay, for a project, there are a lot of changes or a project which is a new, it's untypical. It requires both the designer and the contractor to sit at the same time. Is it clear? So this method actually is having a lot of advantages. It's the fastest. Okay, it's the fastest. It's having less, uh, less issues. Uh, and then it's it fits. Uh, new project or antibacterial project, and it goes on. Now, what is the main issue with this one? Yeah, flexible, you can change whatever you want. If I want to change something, I don't need to go to the consultant who is in another company to change it for me. Any change can be done directly within the company, and then directly it will be approved and changed. It's flexible, as as Masi. Okay. Now, what what is the issue with this one, other than being expensive? What is the issue of this one? This is the last point and then we'll stop here. What is the issue of this particular method? What do you think? You know, in, in Oman, in Oman, can we open can we open a consultancy and a contractor at the same time? 
in Oman, can you be a contractor and a consultant at the same time? Anybody who has worked in construction? Other than the price, we say it's expensive, but other than the price. Can you be in Oman, can you be a consultant and a contractor at the same time? Contractor and a consultant at the same time with the same name. Okay. Those who have worked in construction, those who have worked in construction or they are related to construction, they will know that the answer according to the Omani law, you cannot be a contractor, you cannot, you cannot be a contractor and a consultant under the same company, under the same owner. Okay, and this is to avoid. This is to avoid any playing going on. Okay, now if there is any if there is any issue with your design here, will you know about it in this method? If there is any issue with your design or with your construction, will they tell you? Anybody will tell you here? Or because they are in the same company, they will not inform you. They will not inform you, and this is very expensive. You keep, you need to keep paying for any change. Okay, so if there are anything, you will not be informed. Now, in this method, will the contract, will the construction manager inform you if there is any issue? Now here, the construction manager will inform you. He has no point of hiding something. Because he does not have any relationship with the consultant. The same goes here. If there is any mistake, the contractor will tell me he has no relationship with the with the architect or the consultant. He will not hide from me, or he will not hide from me something if it's wrong. Now, in this method, there is a huge way of keeping a lot of play inside. It's a huge project. You cannot control whatever they are doing. Is it clear? That's why if you go to the Omani law once again, so if you see the Omani law, I'll try to bring for you the Omani law uh, next class. In the Omani law, it's clearly saying that you cannot be the contractor and the consultant of the same project at the same time, unless, for example, you are doing your own project. Okay, but even though, you cannot be the you cannot be the consultant and the contractor or any project with the same ownership. You, you cannot be the owner of both companies. Okay. Otherwise, you will see that a lot of companies are entering as a consultant and as a contractor, and they will tell you that there are a lot of issues, there are a lot of a lot of things, and you cannot track whether whether the things they are saying for you is correct or not. Taking into account the owner is not experienced to judge whether this is correct or wrong. Are we clear? Are we clear? Okay. So next class we are going to complete. We are going to have more case studies, practical uh, examples. I'm going to solve some questions from the previous exams. How would you choose according to whatever is given? Which method is going to be good? Is it the first method, second method, or whatever method is it? Okay. Anyhow, we have finished our class. Thank you for listening, and see you in the upcoming. See you in the upcoming lectures. If you have no questions, and you are free to free to leave.